Her photographs have launched a model's career, but her next move may be truly groundbreaking. Do you have outstanding crash at all, or? You're gonna hit on the app, access now. 32-year-old Mayan Ziv is creating an app that will map the world and redefine mobility. And we disperse. That was a clip from the new series, We Are Canada, that debuted last night on the CBC. The show was conceived and produced in collaboration with Ken Dryden, who serves as one of the executive producers on the project, and we are lucky enough to have him in studio right now. Thanks for stopping by, Ken. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now, I got to watch the first episode last night, and I got to say I really enjoyed it. But for those who may have missed it, what can you tell us about the series? Well, it's a six-part series, and running on CBC for consecutive Sundays through April and, and, and part of May, and then in the summer on Radio Canada. And uh, it's on Sunday nights at, at, at 7 o'clock. And the idea of it is that as 2017 is Canada's 150th birthday, the question is, is that, is that how to approach it? Because it's a natural time for people to stop and look around and see where we are as a country, see where we've been, uh, see where we were going, see whether that's where we would like to go, and, and, and just to get a sense of ourselves. And, uh, and so we thought that the, the best approach is not to look back uh, at the past, but to look forward, and to look forward uh, to see what we have in us to be. And the best way of doing that, to, to look at the work and the activities of many young people in the country. What, what are they doing? And to take in those remarkable, amazing things in which we do three per episode per week. I love that. Not to rest on our laurels, but to look forward at what our young, great people are doing today yeah. and tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned off the top, you're one of the executive producers and the creator of the show. But what was the catalyst for creating this project? Yeah. It started at least five years ago uh, in my mind when I, when I was, I had been a member of parliament uh, and I approached McGill with the idea for a course and, and I, I wanted to call it Making the Future. The rest of a student's academic life, they learn about the past, they learn about the present, but they're going to be living 60 plus years into the future, working 40 plus years into the future, and, the, and, they're, and they think about the future um, and, and the question is, 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 is to say to them, it's your life, it's your country, it's your world. You're not just a passenger to it, you can be a driver to it. So where do you want to go? What kind of Canada do you want to live in? So that's how the course was conceived. It kind of worked at McGill, then we expanded it to Calgary, also to, to Saskatchewan and to Ryerson. And, uh, but always knowing that in 2017, I wanted to go beyond the university to do essentially the same kind of thing, but across the country. And, uh, and so that's how We Are Canada came out of that. And again, to focus on the individuals. If, if Canadians want to know who we are, if we want to know what our identity is, look at what we're doing. And some of these Canadians that we're going to be meeting are exemplary. But I'm going to ask you a tricky question. Can you highlight maybe one or two of them that really stand out for you? Well, that is hard because, because there are several that are, that are really quite, they get me every time. And one of them is Mayanne Zeev. And, and Mayanne um, has a form of muscular dystrophy. She's 25 years old. She's a photographer. Um, but she's also somebody who has decided that um, it's, it's not right for her to need to function uh, within a city like Toronto with the kind of barriers that, that exist for somebody who has a disability and who the rest of us who don't have a disability, we don't think about. Mm -hmm. Well, she's thinking about it and she's forcing us to think about it. And she's creating this app and she has created it. And of course, then the idea is, you start with, in her case, you know, Queen Street in Toronto, but if it's Queen Street, why not every street? And if it's Toronto, why isn't it also Tokyo and, and Timbuktu? Um, I mean, it's the same question. Uh, and that's one of the things that's so interesting about these people is that they don't, they don't think in terms of barriers and boundaries. 
they think about what they're interested in and if that takes them to another part of this country or to another part of the world, that's where you go. And uh, so she's one of them. There's this um, fellow in Montreal, Mohamed Hagi, um, who has, he doesn't have an urban garden. He's created an urban farm and he's done it on a rooftop. And you should see this thing. I mean, it is so big and essentially what he, he says is, is, you know, look, I mean, if, if, if buildings are going to cover over vegetation, why can't vegetation cover over buildings? And, and the line about nobody in Canada wants to be a farmer, he said, no, that's not right. But everybody wants to live in a city. Why can't you be an urban farmer? And so what he has done is, in two different places, he's created this urban farm on a rooftop to supply food to all kinds of people, to thousands of people. And, and now you look around, I mean, the thing that amazes me now is that I can't see a flat roof anymore without seeing a potential farm. I mean, <laughs> why not every warehouse? You know, it's not a bad not? problem to have. <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite terrific. And, and just down the line, there are just you know, so many that are really very interesting. Why is it so important to showcase these individuals? Um, because I think, I think a few things. I mean, one is that they, they deserve to be seen. They deserve to be taken in. Um, one of the things that's so terrific about them is that they are so absorbed in what they're doing, they're not self-absorbed. Um, there are very, you know, that, that our least attractive feature for all of us is that once we start to become self-focused, when it becomes all about us, and if it's about us, then for anybody else, who cares? You know, you, you're making it all about you, so it's not about me at all. Well, these are people who are so interested in what they're doing that that's what their focus is. And, and you can see their fascination, um, and you, can, you start to see their possibilities. And that's quite terrific, because it, it gives all of us an idea of, of what's in us, you know, what might be next? Um, where might we go, you know, with, with all of this? And, uh, um, and, they're, and they're just, they're, they're inspirational without any kind of orchestrated inspiration. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just do, and you watch them do, and you can't help but be inspired. That's what I was going to say, is that watching this show has already inspired me, seeing what these three people so far in the first episode are achieving. But what do you hope uh, the rest of the public gets out of this? Well, I, again, I think it's just a, a sense of, of, of possibility. And it's, and it's possibility in terms of what Canada might be, but it's also possibility in terms of what they themselves might do. I mean, these are people who, when you look at them, you don't say to yourself, oh, you know, impossible, look at them. I mean, they're, they're freaks, essentially, and, and I, I'm not like them. I can't be like them. I'll never be like them. And so I'm interested to see them, but I, don't, I can't relate to them. They're really relatable. I mean, that they, they in, in many ways, you know, represent the best side of ourselves and that best side that's in, that's in all of us. And, and so I think that's, that's certainly a big part of what I hope people see in that. Absolutely. And the show is narrated by Sarah Pauly, who, like the others, is a change maker in her own right. Why is it so important and so great to have her a part of the team? Because she really embodies all of this. I mean, Sarah's a few years older than most of the people who are shown. And, uh, but Sarah is, in many ways, what they would want to be. And uh, in, in her world of, of making films, acting, directing, writing, um, she's doing really quite remarkable stuff. I mean, it's, it's not just arable things that can go up on a screen that's replaceable by anything else that goes up. She's, she's testing, she's challenging, she's doing um, uh, different kinds of films. And, and again, within, in Sarah's case, you, know, you, you look at her and you think, what's she going to do five years from now or ten years from now? I, I, I can't imagine, but I also can't wait. It'll definitely be very exciting to see what she does in the future. But 
Before we run out of time here, I've got to ask you a personal question. With the show airing last night, also the NHL regular season concluded last night. So having an NHL Hall of Fame goaltender with us right now, I have to ask you, who do you think out of the Canadian teams has the best chances of bringing the cup back home to Canada? Well, at least there are some Canadian teams this year. As yes. there, there wasn't last year. Um, there are some interesting ones. I mean, that, that, that Edmonton is a team that is improving. Toronto's improving. Calgary is improving. Montreal might be. Um, and, and when you get into the playoffs, no team is good enough at the moment that they enter the playoffs to actually win. They've got to find a way of getting better during the playoffs. And each of those teams have players that actually have uh, room to get better and better. And again, just like the, the people in, in this series, you, you have no idea what they might be. You have no idea what they might do. And, and, uh, uh, and that's what's exciting about the playoffs. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those things of, you know, of, again, of who knows. And, 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 but that is the good news. I mean, you, you don't really have a good idea of where it's going to end up. But where is Connor McDavid going to take things? Mm -hmm. Where are some of the players on the Leafs? And, you know, where are they going to take it? And uh, they've, got placed, they've got places to go. Well, I guess as they say, the Stanley Cup is the hardest championship to win. So thank you for indulging me with that question. I'm sure you get it all the time. <laughs> Episode 2 of We Are Canada airs on Sunday, April 16th on CBC at 7 p.m. But if our audience missed it and want to watch the first episode, where can they find it? You can always find it on the CBC website, so cbc.ca. Thanks for coming in, Ken. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoyed it.